Hello everyone, hope you're fine and safe. Long time I didn't make um, any videos. And today I'm gonna make a video about the uh, rubbing fold in turbo machines. And I'm going to use the T-Wave multi-channel analyzer, the eight channel analyzer, with the Bentley RK4 rotor kit, uh, which the one I like most. Uh, I believe I did before one video about the oil whirling and oil whip using the T-Wave and really they, uh, the unit was very successful to uh, present the, uh, the oil whirl and oil whip. And I believe I would like to do it one more time with some changes uh, to the oil uh, pressure and the oil type even, and I will see how this will affect the results. But today I'm gonna do the uh, video using the uh, uh, the RK4 kit to show you how the rub will look like in the orbit and the uh, full spectrum. This is the data from the T-Wave. This is the orbit plot because the machine is not running and even I didn't inject any volt, uh, volts yet in the uh, proximity probes, but this is the uh, the orbit plot for the bearing number one, which I should apply uh, rubbing near to it. So we should see how the orbit shape will change uh, with the rubbing effect. And this is the orbit plot for the bearing number two, which is the bearing at uh, bearing have the which is which is the one have the journal bearing. Uh, and this is the full spectrum, which is a new feature in the T-Wave. Uh, before, the full spectrum wasn't uh, a feature, but now we can view the full spectrum plot. And uh, this is the tabular list. You can see the bearing 1x, 1y, 2x, 2y. The bearing 1 with velocity transducer, bearing 1 with velocity with volumeter, and the bearing in the vertical direction and bearing two with volumeter in the horizontal direction. You see, uh, I will now, I will start to here. Uh, I inject now some voltage. Now we can see the voltage gap for the four proximity probe, like minus nine, minus 10, minus 10, minus eight. Normally the linear range uh, for the proximity probe, you need, your target for gapping a proximity probe, you need to uh, make the gap uh, between the proximity probe and the shaft surface in the midpoint of the linear range, which is between like roughly between minus eight to minus 12 DC voltage. And uh, uh, what we're gonna see here, I will just first, I will show you the, uh, the rotor kit. This is the, my rotor kit at the moment, which is the one we're going to use. Uh, we have, this is the T-Wave, our unit, and uh, it's connected uh, with one, two, three, four channels. And this is the key phaser. And also we have here a velocity transducer, and we have two volumeters connected. This is the, uh, i show you one more clear photo. This is the velocity transducer. And uh, this is the key phaser, and we have a notch here on the, on the coupling. And this is our velocity transducer. This is volumeter. And we have here another volumeter. This is in the vertical direction. This is in the horizontal direction. And we have here our lovely journal bearing. Uh, we have a reservoir at the bottom, and uh, we get the oil sucked from here with the... Uh, oil pump, this is our oil pump, and then it will be injected back to the journal bearing. We have two proximity probes in the journal bearing, and we have four tubes inject the oil in the four quadrants of the journal bearing. And also we have here two proximity probe. This is bearing number one, and this is bearing number two. And this is a preload bracket. We can use the preload bracket that one to have a rolling element bearing here, and I can adjust the uh, centricity ratio uh, to uh, generate uh, oil whirl or oil web. Uh, when we have smaller eccentricity ratio, we give the upper hand to the oil, so it will start to try to control the shaft. 
and causing the oil whirl. And uh, when the oil whirl frequency matching the first critical speed, for example, this will uh, generate the uh, what we call as the oil whip. And this is a very destructive phenomena. And I have here two disks, which I'm using uh, for balancing as well. And this is the rubbing kit. Uh, I have tachometer and I have optical, sorry, and I have a key phaser. This is here, this is the uh, rubbing kit. Like we have this uh, screw and I'm, while the, I will show you now when the machine is running, I'm trying to make the screw tip touching the shaft and this will start to generate the rub and we will see the effect of the screw touching the shaft on the orb plot and how it will look like and how this will affect the uh, the orbit shape and the full spectrum plot. Uh, actually, this part is explained more in the uh, turbo machinery course. And uh, I show you the effect of the rubbing on the orbit plot, on the uh, polar plot in the transient state and on the steady state. Like if you have Newkirk effect, if you have Morton effect, uh, if you have full rub, uh, if you have partial rub, if you have annular rub. So there is different types of, uh, of rubbing. And uh, we can see the effect of the rubbing on the uh, on the steady state condition and on the transient state condition. And if you have like light rub or if you have uh, continuous frictional rub. And uh, this is the disk which we're using in balancing. And we can here attach balancing weights and it all marked with angles. Uh, this is our T wave, which is connected here by 80 channels. I connect only seven channels. And this is the Ethernet cable, which I connect to my router, and I can access to the unit from anywhere. Uh, yep, yeah, this is the general bearing again. The rubbing, two probes for bearing number one, vertical and horizontal and vertical and horizontal probes. And uh, yeah, I prefer to show you the rotor kit first. So when we see the data, we will know what we are talking about. Now let's have a look. And I will. Uh, it will be a bit noisy because I will turn the oil bump on, so it will make some noise. But I hope you still be able to listen to me. Now I turn the oil bump, it's on now. And now I will start to put the machine on the slow roll and I will hit play now you can see the orb plot for bearing number one the orb plot for bearing number two the levels the overall direct vibration is like 15 micron 21 micron 15 micron 13 micron and the slow roll speed is three point 303 RPM. Now I will raise the speed up and let's see what will happen. Now we're rounding up. As you can see here, the speed is increasing 600. I can see the orbit shape, how it looks like. our full spectrum bearing number two which is the journal bearing is preloaded because of the preload bracket the one i showed to you and see one x in the forward precision now we're going through a critical speed you see uh, with 264 micron and then we're dropping back See, vibration dropped because we go through a critical speed, vibration dropped again. This is the direction of rotation, which is counterclockwise, blank to bright. That's why we have a forward precision on the for a spectrum. You can see here the uh, volumeter vibration reading 
3.9 mm per second, 4.1 mm per second. And this is the reading in microns. We will raise the speed up to about 5,900. This is our orbit. And let's see what will happen. Now we at 5,900. And 18, 20, yep. This is the uh, running speed. It's the orbit shape for the bearing number one and bearing number two. And you can see how many revolutions in the orbit. Now, I will use this screw, let's see another photo, that, that one, I will screw it in, tighten it in, start to make the tip of this screw touching the shaft and see how this will affect the orbit shape as part of rubbing. Let's see. You see? I'll do it again. We got eight shape and we got, you can see the half of the running speed, like you will get eight shape and the half of the running speed will be Elevated. And why is this happening? This is part of the training course. But let's have a look again. That's beautiful. Eight shape and half of the running is beat. This is beautiful. Eight shape, as you can see. And here, blank to bright with the direction of rotation. So we have here forward precision. And then you see blank to bright is clockwise, opposite to the direction of rotation, which is reverse precision. That's why you see the reverse precision component here, half of the running speed, or 0.5x, in the reverse precision side magnified more than the forward precision side. And this is what we call rebounding of the shaft, like shaft because it's hitting and try to rebound in the opposite direction. And then it continue back again on its right whirling direction in the forward precision and so on and so on and so on. I don't want to keep the, the screw very near to the shaft for a long time because I, won't, I don't want to damage my, my shaft. But uh, yeah, that's the how the, the rubbing affect uh, the orbit and the full spectrum. You can see the running speed, 1x, half of the running speed in the forward precision, half of the running speed in the reverse precision was higher amplitude. That's why we have reverse precision here. And this is a smaller 1x on the reverse precision side. This is bearing number one, it's preloaded. And yeah, that's all. Uh, I hope you like it. Definitely, if you would like to see more information about rubbing, whirling, shock eccentricity, preloads, misalignment, unbalance, electrostatic discharges, shock to crack, uh, surge, stall, many other faults, please feel free to uh, join us in the advanced turbo machinery training. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, your feedback and your comments will be highly appreciated and i hope you enjoyed the uh, the video thank you so much see you next time